my name is Blake, and I'm excited to be here with you all tonight. Uh, and this is my beautiful bride, Millie, you know what I mean? Speaking of influence, she influences me a ton, you know what I mean? She, uh, she influences me in all the right ways, you know what I mean? I love her. We've been married for eight months now, so we're uh, marriage experts. So if y'all need any relationship advice, you know, we got it, you know. Uh, we're ready to teach the class and all that stuff. Um, but we're eight months in and y'all, honestly, we got just something just happened uh, that's just building anticipation for us. We actually uh, just bought a house. So we just bought our first house. So we're so excited for that. Um, it's a huge step. I'm like nervous. I don't know how, I don't know what's going to happen. You know, they're like, they're like checking all my credit and stuff like that. I'm trying to hide stuff. No, I'm kidding. But, uh, but it's exciting. And honestly, we can't wait uh, for our new home. So I'm actually going to give you a sneak peek. So this is actually uh, in the living room of the new home. Okay. So there it is. Okay. Boom. No, nope, no, nope, you can't look too long. There it is. You got to come to my house. Come check it out. I want y'all to come check it out. Y'all got to check out the place. And we love to love, love to have uh, y'all over. But 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 we can't wait. You know, we can't wait for uh, the house to close on it, uh, to start moving in and stuff like that. Uh, but even for y'all, I guarantee you at this point in the semester, there's things that y'all can't wait for. Am I right? That's probably some things that y'all can't wait for too. So y'all go ahead and discuss this. Uh, what can you not wait for at this point in the semester? You know, it's April, you know what I mean? What can you not wait for at this point in the semester? And I'll bring us back in a little bit. Hey, there's probably, there's probably a bunch of things uh, y'all can't wait for. I can only imagine y'all have a spring break, so y'all y'all getting nasty. So you probably can't wait for this. You know, y'all probably can't wait for summer, you know, and to get out of classes, you know what I mean? Head to the beach, you know, relax a little bit. You know, it's understandable. You can't wait for that. I can't wait for it, too, in some ways. Uh, some of y'all probably can't wait for Chiefs football to come back. Man, we're kind of in this dead spot right now. You know, it's like we, we're kind of in regular season basketball. I really only like the playoffs. There's not a lot of sports to watch right now. I'm like, man, I'm ready for football season. Get, get the football back. You know what I mean? Probably can't wait for that in some ways. Uh, I, I can't wait for this. Uh, I can't wait for the, the mass, you know, to kind of end right now. Uh, anybody with me? You know what I mean? I, I can't wait for it. To be over, you know what I mean. I've, I've had my fill of masks, you know. My beard is suffering, you know. I'm ready to I'm ready to be done uh, with the mask, so I can't wait for that. Uh, also, I can't wait for it to stop snowing in April in Kansas. I don't understand how in the world did we get a blizzard last night in like 17 foot of snow in April 19th. I don't understand. I don't understand. I can't wait for it to stop snowing in Kansas. But, but me and my wife have, have been uh, on the college campus helping students grow in their faith. And it's crazy because there's a lot of thing that co things that college students can't wait for. Uh, but if there's one thing that we don't hear often uh, is that college students talking about not being able to wait for this. Eternity. You know, and it makes sense because, man, eternity is something that a lot of people don't think about. You know, if you've been with us the last few weeks, we've been on this series of influencers. We've been talking about what it means to be an influencer, what it means to have influence and influence uh, other people. A few weeks ago, we talked about what it looks like to be an influencer in the midst of being a Gen Zer. You know, and how to overcome some of those obstacles and even some of the benefits of being a Gen Zer. And then a couple of weeks ago, we talked about what it means to be a witness and share our faith with people around us, helping other people know who Jesus is. And then last week we talked about what it looks like to live for spiritual multiplication, for my life to influence somebody else's life who influences somebody else's life. And tonight, man, I'm excited because we're actually gonna talk about living for eternity. So we're gonna talk about how all those things fit in the context of this thing that we call eternity. But before we dive in, we gotta answer the question, you know, what is eternity? What is eternity? You know, and it's a good question. You know, you're probably looking at me right now. You're like, hey, Blake, honestly, I, I'm a college student. Like, and I have a hard time thinking about what's going to happen tomorrow. Like, the, the main thing I'm thinking about is, you know, at dinner tonight, am I going to have a burrito or nachos? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just, you know, I'm not, I'm not there. I'm not thinking about eternity. Maybe when I'm 70, you know, I think about that stuff. But, man, I'm not thinking about it right now. But if you think about it, what happens in eternity, you know, really does matter right now. You know, like, like, like if, if eternity uh, is nothing but an all-you-can-eat buffet, like after this life, it's just all-you-can-eat buffet for the rest of all, my life, for all of eternity, then y'all, I need to get to grubbing right now. You know what I mean? I need to make room, you know? 
And then, man, if, if eternity uh, is, man, nothing but watching movies, you know what I mean? Like, literally, we're just watching movies the entire time. The y'all, man, I'm, I'm going to get my Netflix subscription up. You know what I mean? I'm going to be watching Netflix movies right now. You know, man, if, if eternity is nothing but a party, then y'all, I'm going to work on my dance moves. You know what I'm saying? I lost a few of them, but I still got it. You know what I mean? And what happens in eternity really does impact how we live right now. And it's crazy because, man, so many people, because they've, they don't think about eternity, man, they have a hazy view uh, on what eternity is. And because they have a hazy view on eternity, they have a hazy view on how they should live right now. And I think the reason why people are hazy on what eternity is, is one, because they don't think about it, or two, because they have a bad source. You know, they have a bad source. And we probably know a lot about bad sources right now. You know, there's people walking around, you know, with the, with the bad sources. They're like, hey, did you hear that the NBA playoffs is like a government conspiracy to get us all to believe that there's a flat earth? You know, like all that stuff. <laughs> and you're like, dude, where did you get that from? You know what I mean? You don't know about bad sources, but man, honestly, we can have bad sources when it comes to eternity, what life is like after death. You know, there's a lot of different uh, uh, speculations as to what life is like after death. And it's crazy because, man, for all of us, we probably have questions. You know, we probably have questions like, like, like what, is, what is eternity actually like? Like, how do I get there? You know, are we floating on clouds? You know, how long will we be there? You know, what? Who all is going to be there? Some of y'all are probably asking, like, yo, will my golden doodle be there? You know, you're probably asking, like, man, are we going to float on clouds? Like, are we going to play a harp? Like, like what's going to happen? You know, is there a heaven for a G? You know, I mean, we're asking all these questions, like, man, what is eternity really like? And honestly, if we really go to the source, if we go to the Bible and we look at what the Bible actually says, the, the ultimate source for information, it's crazy because the Bible has a lot to say about eternity. It has a lot to tell us about what eternity is like and how to get there and how to have the best life in eternity. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to take some time just to look at what the Bible says about eternity. Uh, and the first thing we need to understand about what the Bible says about eternity is that, uh, is that eternity is spent in either one of two places, uh, heaven or hell, okay? And not everybody is going to heaven, so you can write that on your sheet. <laughs> So I didn't mean that. I meant the picture up there. Okay. So you can write heaven and hell on your sheet. And the first thing that the Bible wants to, wants to communicate is that, hey, not every single person is going to heaven or hell. It's really contingent upon this. See, Jesus had died on the cross man, for our sins so that man, we could have an opportunity to cross over from hell to heaven. See, every single one of us, when we were born, we have a, a sin issue in, inbred in us, literally from the time we're born. And because of that, all of us, when we're born, we are on a one-track road to hell, every single one of us. But at some point in our life, man, if we give our life to Christ, if we surrender to him, man, we have an opportunity to cross over from hell to heaven. And it's crazy because Jesus actually articulates it really well in John 3.18. He says, whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life for God's wrath remains on them. And so Jesus gives us that option. He says, hey, man, whoever has the son, man, you'll have eternal life. You'll have heaven. Whoever doesn't have the son, man, you're not going to have life. It will be hell. And so even as we look at those two options, man, it's amazing because for those who do place their trust in Christ, for those who do begin a relationship with Christ and follow him, man, they have an amazing, amazing thing to look forward to. And honestly, I don't think we fully understand it. I think we have a bad view of heaven. And so what I'm going to do is just spend some time unpacking and talking about what heaven is actually like. I mean, because heaven is absolutely amazing. Honestly, I think for a lot of people, they think, man, I'm not, I don't even want to go to heaven because man, heaven's going to be boring. I'm going to be floating around. Man, it's, there's not going to be a lot to do. Man, is it even real? Like, am I even going to be myself? That type of stuff. Uh, but it's crazy when you look at the scriptures and what the scripture actually says, man, heaven is very real. Heaven is very real. You know, scripture is clear that heaven is real. John 14, 3, Jesus says this, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I'm coming again and will take you to myself so that where I am, there you also will be. And so this is Jesus saying, hey, I'm going ahead of you. I'm trying to, pre I'm going to prepare a place for you. And the, Jesus, the place that Jesus is talking about is an actual place. 
You know, and that's one of the things we understand about heaven if we read the scriptures is that it's actually a physical place. Like it has dimensions, like it's in space, it's in time. Like one of the things about heaven that's actually interesting is it's, it's going to be a lot like earth except enhanced. It's going to be redeemed. Literally all of creation, man, is going to be redeemed and there's going to be a new earth. It's going to be a physical place that we actually get to be at. But not only is the earth going to be redeemed, man, actually, man, our physical bodies are going to be redeemed. And so in the same way that Jesus rose from the dead and had a physical body, some of y'all might remember the story of Thomas where he says, hey, put your fingers in the, in the hole in my hand. And Thomas actually could touch him and he was physical. Y'all, in the same way, we're going to receive new bodies and we're going to be physical. Y'all, we're going to have minds. We're going to think. We're going to remember things that happened in the former life. Yo, we're going to have appetites. We're going to like laugh. You know, like we, 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 we're actually going to eat food. You know what I mean? Like we're going to be hungry. You know, those types of things. Man, it's amazing because heaven is so, so real. Because we actually have physical man, bodies. Something amazing to look forward to. But not only do we have physical bodies, man, there's also a whole bunch of stuff going on around us. There'll be animals, okay, in heaven. So animals will be there. And I know a lot of y'all are thinking, y'all are like, hey, I lost a pet, you know, back in the day and stuff. Is Fifi going to be there? Well, yeah, Fifi's an animal, okay? So, so, so and there's, I'm not saying that she will be or won't be, but there's a chance, you know what I mean? She'll be there. You know, animals will be in heaven for all you animal lovers. And even along with that, some of y'all love music, I know. Uh, well, music is going to be in heaven. You know, we're going to be playing songs. We're going to be singing, you know, and all that different stuff. We're actually going to be dancing, the scripture says. You know, so we're going to be dancing with one another, man, having a good time and stuff like that. It's kind of crazy because actually entertainment will still exist in heaven. But we're going to perform and, and hang out and have a good time. We're going to act and play. We'll watch movies and that type of stuff. Man, we're going to have entertainment. For those of you who are creative and who love creating new things and, like, creating new ideas, the beautiful, beautiful thing about heaven is that you're going to continue to create. You're going to continue to build. Man, you're going to get to do it man, forever, exactly how you want to for all eternity. We're going to work. We're going to have jobs. We're going to interact. You know, we're not going to see, all, all going, to be, going to be looking at God like 24-7. Like I think sometimes people think heaven is just like that. You're just looking at God for 24-7, just, oh, you know. <laughs> so it's not going to be that. That God wants us just to enjoy him, but he also wants us to enjoy each other, you know, in heaven. And we're going to have fun and we're going to enjoy each other. Some of y'all, man, like to play sports here on earth, man. In heaven, we're going to have sports. I think there's some football players in the room, some basketball players, stuff like that, man. We're going to be hooping in heaven, okay? You know what I mean? Except I'm going to have a new body, so I'm going to be cut up and I'm going to do you in, all right? <laughs> so, man, heaven is, heaven is something amazing, amazing that we get to look forward to. You know, and even as you think about your body here on this earth, it's crazy because we, some of y'all are at the prime of your life. You know, some of you all are at the prime of your existence. You know, your body is at its prime right now. Man, even man, some of you athletes and stuff like that, but it's crazy. Our bodies are going to be so, so much more in heaven. I love how theologian Benjamin Calamy describes it. He says, the earthly body is slow and heavy in all its emotions. It gets tired fast with action but our heavenly bodies will be like fire, as active and as nimble as our thoughts are. See, theologians would agree, man, that the limits are taken off in a, in a unique way, not totally, but in a unique way in the heaven where, man, our bodies are redeemed and we get to experience in the truest sense what God originally, originally made us to be. See, man, we, in, in, on earth, man, before eternity, we don't get to experience the fullness of what God created us to be, but, man, in heaven, because heaven is a real place, we really get to experience, man, what God created us to be. And it's something amazing to look forward to. But not only is heaven real, he heaven is also relieving. Heaven is also relieving. You know, there's so much that happens in this earth, man, during our time here on this earth that, that man, honestly, man, is painful, man, that, that we experience suffering, we experience loss, all those things here on this earth. And it's crazy because in heaven, the scripture is clear that it'll be relieving. Revelation 7, 16 says they will no longer hunger nor thirst, nor will the sun beat down on them or any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd and will guide them to springs of the water of life. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. What an amazing promise, right? God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. It's a sign of relief. 
what we experience in this life, the suffering, the hard things that we experience in this life, God's going to personally wipe it away. So that means relieving in the area, man, physically. You know, man, some of you all probably have man, physical things that go on with you. Man, I know some people have conditions and stuff like that, man, things that are hard. Man, you know, man, uh, some of y'all might have had injuries in the past. Well, it's crazy because in heaven, man, that's going to, that's, anything that's wrong with you physically is going to be relieved. You know, and even think about your loved ones. I mean, some of you are experienced, experienced, man, loved ones going through sicknesses and stuff like that and hard things. Man, physically, man, that's going to be relieved in heaven, which is an amazing thing to look forward to. Not only that, but emotionally. You know, some people I know, man, they struggle with, like, man, anxiety, depression. Man, they feel relational distance from people. Man, they, they don't know if they're really cared for or really loved by the people around them. Broken relationships, broken families, broken homes. In heaven, that's going to be relieved. There won't be any of that. But he's going to restore our relationships with himself and with other people in such a way that we're going to experience deep, satisfying relief emotionally. And not only that, we're going to experience it physically. I mean, spiritually. We're going to experience it spiritually. Man, all the sin that we've had to fight in this life, if you've trusted in Christ and you're following him, if you've repented from your sins and you're fighting against sin, you're resisting sin in your life, man, when you get to eternity, God is going to remove that from you. And man, you won't have to battle sin anymore. The fight's over. If once and for all, man, you're actually, you're free. Man, completely from the presence of sin, you know what I mean, in your life for all of eternity. And see, there's an amazing relief that's in store for those who have placed their trust in Christ. And it's an amazing thing to look forward to. But not only is hell, I mean, heaven real, relieving and revealing, it's, or not only is it heaven real, relieving, but it's also revealing. It's also revealing. So it's described here in 1 Corinthians 13, 12. It says, for now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we'll see face to face. Now I know in part, then I will know fully, just as I have also been fully known. And so what the writer is saying here is that, man, right now in this life, I only see a dimly, a dim picture of, of God and what he's doing and who he is and stuff like that. But man, when I get to eternity, when I cross over in eternity, when I get to heaven, I'll see a clear picture of who he is and what he's doing. You know, you think about that, that works its way out in a couple of ways. We're going to see clearly God's purposes. We're going to see his purposes and what he's doing in the world. You know, the reality is that God right now, man, the world has been lost and God is redeeming the world to himself. And what he's doing is he's calling a people out of the lost world to himself, man, to experience a relationship with him forever. And the crazy thing is, man, that pe those people man, that get to experience a relationship with Christ, man, the relationships that we get to experience in heaven and how we see God's purposes unfolding are unreal. Man, the relationships are so deep that Randy Alcorn, who wrote an entire book about heaven, literally it's like massive. He, wrote, he actually says this about the relationships that we'll have in heaven. He says this, in heaven, there won't be cliques, exclusiveness, arrogance, posturing, belittling, or jealousy. In heaven, you'll have much closer relationships than you will on earth. And who doesn't long for that? Man, no clicks, no jealousy, no, no gossip, no one talking behind your back. Man, it's just man, deep relationships with one another. Man, where we get to enjoy one another in God, man, for all of eternity. But not only that, God's purposes, man, is that he's calling people out of the world and he's doing that literally globally. He's doing it all over the world, literally in every single corner of the earth. And one day it's going to reach every single tribe, tongue, people, and language. And y'all, this is the thing that I get so excited for is that God is doing this globally. And one day, literally, there's going to be people from every tribe, tongue, people, and people in language standing before God in heaven and enjoying his presence forever. You know, and, and Randy Alcorn would describe it this way, man, the, the, the harmony that we'll get to experience with all people from every tribe like this. He says, the ethnic groups in heaven will be united by their common worship of King Jesus. They will delight in each other's differences, never resenting or being frightened by them. You know, honestly, I read that and, and some of the, the racial conflict and issues that go on in America, and I go, man, I want that. I can't wait for that. I can't wait to be, man, around the throne, man, with my culture, my ethnicity, but then also, man, with cultures and ethnicities from Asia, man, from Africa, man, from China, man, from all over the place, literally the entire world, man, standing before God, man, and enjoying his presence 
forever. It's something I'm looking forward to, and you should too. You should look forward to heaven. Not only is he going to reveal his purposes, he's going to reveal himself. See, Paul said that he, not only do I see, I see right now in a, a poor reflection is in a the mirror, then he says, I'm, I'm going to see face to face. There's a reality that when we get to heaven, we're going to see God face to face. Can you imagine that? Like, like, try to imagine that just for a second, seeing God face to face. Like, like walking up to Jesus and being like, hey, give me a high five. Like, <laughs> or give me a hug, you know? That's amazing to think about. And not only that, because God is inexhaustible and you can never fully know him, literally he just goes on and on and on forever. He's infinite. We're going to spend all of eternity learning more and more and more and more and more about God. You know that feeling that you get when you like learn something about God? It's a good feeling, isn't it? But we're going to get to experience that more and more and more over and over again man, for all of eternity. It's something amazing to look forward to. And heaven is real, it's relieving, and it's revealing. Y'all, to sum it up, heaven is awesome. <laughs> heaven is awesome. You know, it, when you really understand what the Bible says about heaven, it's awesome, and you look forward to it. But not only is heaven awesome, and kind of the flip side of that is also true, hell is awful. Hell is awful. And I know in, in our culture right now, I mean, people try to deny that, that hell exists and stuff like that, but, but it's crazy, man. Of all the people in the Bible, Jesus actually has the most to say about heaven, about hell. Uh, I mean, he's, he's unashamed. He talks about hell frequently. And I trust Jesus because he's the only one that's actually been to heaven and he created hell. And so, man, he would know, you know, out of anybody that we talk to. Again, you got to consider the source. He actually says this. He says, in Matthew 13, they will throw them into the blazing furnace where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth, okay? And so we're talking about a blazing furnace, which is, which is hell, and it'll be eternal agony for all time. There's no escape. There's no paying uh, enough to get out. I mean, it's for all time and for all eternity. And it's crazy because hell's judgment, I man, is, is indicative of how much God hates sin and how much sin really is an offense to him. Hell won't be one degree hotter than, man, our sin deserves. Because God's holy, man, he's God to punish sin. There's actually a guy named J.I. Packer who's been studying the Bible for his entire life, and he kind of got towards the end of his life, and they asked him about hell. They were like, hey, describe hell to us. You know, give us an idea of what hell is like. And he tried to sum it up the best he could. And so here's a picture of what he said. He said, hell is a parallel destiny the removal of any fellowship with God, any pleasure, any form of contentment. He said, it's hard to do, but the way to form a notion about hell is to imagine life where there are no pleasant moments, no rest or refreshment, nothing to give joy, only a sense that you have missed the greatest thing in the world. He goes on to say, that's the heart of the hell experience. Jesus taught repeatedly that hell is awful. It's difficult to talk about hell because it's more awful than we have words for. It's a tragedy when anyone enters eternity without Christ. You know, I man, I don't want I don't want that for myself. You know, I don't want that for anybody I know. You know, and that's the crazy thing about eternity is that, man, there's two realities. And that's what makes eternity so weighty is the fact that, man, I will spend eternity, every single one of us spend eternity in one of two places. Like, like, think about that. Eternity. Forever. And ever. Y'all understand. Hey, maybe this will help. Hey, can somebody, can you give me that rope back there? Appreciate it, Sims. Hey, give it up for him. Appreciate it. Hey, so this rope is, uh, is going to symbolize uh, eternity, okay? And this, uh, this blue strip right here is just going to represent our life, all right? And so you can kind of imagine with me, you know, man, this is your life. So over here, kind of on this end, is like when you're born, you know, so man, you, you popped into the world on this end. Uh, and then on this end, you know, it's kind of when you die, okay? And so all in between, you know, you kind of have like the events of your life. You know, it's like you, you went to high school right here, you know, you, you enrolled at K-State right here. You know, you got married right here. You know, you had a few kids right here. 
you know, and all that stuff, man, all the way, man, your entire life, right? You know, and then you kind of think, man, even going beyond that, you know, so it's like, you know, you have a few kids and then, and then you pass away and then what? Your, kid, your kids probably pass away like right here, right? You know, and then your kids' kids probably pass away right here. You know, so just imagine that, right? So this is, this is just the timeline, you know, of your life. And so what, what I get to do, man, a lot of times is, man, help try to help, try to help people understand how to invest their life uh, and how to really live for eternity. And so a lot of times I talk to people, I'm like, hey, man, you, have you thought about placing your trust in Christ? And have you thought about surrendering your life to Christ? And what I hear a lot is, is man, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I thought about it, bro, but, <laughs> but dog, you don't, you don't understand what I got going on. Man, man, I got, I got stuff happening, man. Man, stuff's cracking in my life, man. You know, I, I'll do it later on, but man, man, not right now. They'll say, man, oh, man, you know, I, I realize, you know, you're talking about that Jesus stuff, man, but, but man, you don't realize what I got going on right here. You know what I mean? And it's like, man, my heart breaks for him because, man, on the grand scale of eternity, I'm like, man, you, you're banking it all on this little blue strip. They look at me and they go, Blake, what about this? And I look at them and I go, man, what about this? Right? And it goes on and on and on forever and ever and never. We're talking about eternity. Yo, that's the reason why if we give this blue strip any consideration in light of eternity, if we give eternity any type of consideration, then we have no choice but to do this, to live for eternity. Live for eternity. Don't live for this little blue strip. Live for eternity. It makes no sense when time will go on and on and on. You will spend eternity one or two places. It makes no sense and to live just for this blue strip. You know, some of you all might be asking, man, Blake, what do you mean? What do you mean living for eternity? Like, well, what does that mean? Well, it means this. It means, man, remember this acronym, DIPS. Don't write this at the bottom. I'm going to come back to it later. Write it out on the side somewhere, Okay. And so it says it's living for eternity, but man, it's dips. This is what it means to live for eternity. It means you make decisions in light of eternity. It means you make investments in light of eternity. It means your priorities surround eternity. It means your schedule surrounds eternity. I made decisions on this blue dot that are going to set me up, man, for all of this, right? Man, I don't invest in things on this blue strip, man, that aren't going to last, aren't going to impact, man, the rest of this rope, right? Man, I'm not going to prioritize things right now. I don't have time for things, man, that don't matter down this way, right? Man, I own things on my schedule. If you look at my schedule, somebody should be able to look at my schedule and say, man, Blake really cares about this, Right? Dips, dips, and live for eternity. Live for eternity. Don't live for the blue strip. Just live for eternity. And I'll give you two things that are hinging on your decision as to whether or not you do that. There's two things that are really at stake if what you decide to do with this blue dot. If you decide to live for it, man, there's something that's going to happen. If you decide not to, there's things that are going to happen. There's consequences, you know, for that. Uh, and there's two things, two reasons why I want you to live for eternity. The first one is just this, is do it for yourself. Do it for yourself. You know, one day you're going to stand before God and you're going to give an account for your life. One day you're going to stand before God alone, by yourself, with no one else there. Not your mom, not your pastor, not your friends. You're going to stand before God by yourself. And you're going to be judged based upon what you did with your life. If you placed your trust in Christ, then you're going to actually go before, or if you, if you, have, if you haven't placed your trust in Christ, you're going to go before God the Father. And God the Father is going to read off every sin that you committed, which is going to take a long time. 
and then you're going to receive the due penalty for your sins, which is an eternity in hell. If you haven't placed your trust in Christ, if you have, you're going to walk up to God's throne and you're going to hear an interruption. Jesus is going to say, hey, 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 hold on. Now that one. Yeah, he's mine. Bring him over here and you'll come to his throne. And man, and you, you stand before him. And the beautiful thing about his judgment is, man, it's not a judgment for sin. You won't have to give an answer for your sin. Literally, his sins, his blood, man, covers every single sin that you ever committed. But you'll have to give an answer for how you spent your time, for how faithful you lived for him. You know, so you will still give an account for your life. It's still a judgment, but it's not a judgment of condemnation where I get to experience the consequences of my sin. But, man, I just get to experience rewards but I get more or less based upon how faithful I was to Jesus. So, so if you are in Christ, it matters how you live. You know, you should want to receive more rewards, you know, when you stand before Christ on that day. You know, the reality is, man, we're all going to be judged. We're all going to stand before God. And, and I think Hebrews 4.13 captures it perfectly. It says this. It says, nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. That verse is saying everything that we do, everything that we think, everything that we say is going to get uncovered and laid bare before God one day when we get judged. You know, and that, that word right there, uncovered and laid bare, actually, it's, it's, it's actually from a, a, a Greek idiom where literally it's talking about like going up to your, your bed sheets, you know, like you're laying down in, in your bed all comfortable and stuff like that and like ripping the sheets off. You know what I mean? Y'all know that feeling, right? You know, when somebody rips the sheets off of you, you're like, right? You're uncovered and laid bare. You know, you're exposed. Uh, and there's a reality that, man, our, when our judgment, when God judges us, man, we're going to be, we're going to be exposed, you know? And all of us know what that feels like. You know, we've probably, probably experienced this in a bunch of different ways. You know, if you played sports, you know, you probably experienced that on like game day. You know, it's like literally, you know, you can tell the coach, hey, I've been training. I've been working hard, man. You know, my jump shot, I've been, I've been working on it and all that. Uh, but yo, when you get in the game, if somebody take your cookies, you're getting exposed, right? You know what I mean? And there's no hiding, you know, whether you worked hard or not. You're going to get exposed, you know, on game day. It doesn't matter. You know, you can say, hey, I studied for the test, right? Hey, I studied. I'm good. Like, I feel good going in this test and all that stuff. But, yo, when you take that test and the cheat sheet gone, you get exposed, don't you? <laughs> you get exposed. Or, you know, some of y'all probably had, you know, parents that would come home from work and stuff like that. And you're doing something you know you shouldn't do. You get exposed, you know what I mean? When they walk in, you're trying to cover it up and stuff like that. Ain't no covering it up. You exposed. Uh-uh, come here. You're getting your butt whooped. You know what I mean? You get exposed. We probably all experienced that uh, in, some, in different ways. Uh, Y'all, in a similar way, man, God, when we stand before God, we're going to be exposed. We're going to get judged. And that's crazy to think about because, man, there's so many different areas, man. It's literally every single area of our life. You know, you think about all the different areas that God is going to judge. You know, it's like, man, my thoughts how I treated others, my attitude, you know, what I, what I looked at and watched. You know, you think about, and even going on, man, every word we speak, literally every word that I speak is I'm going to have to give an account for it, how I spent my time, what I did with the Bible, what I spent money on. You know, all these things I'm going to have to give an account for, you know, when I stand before God. You know, and the cool thing is, man, even though that there's a judgment that we're going to stand before God and we're going to give an account for these things, I mean, that, that should strike some fear in our heart, but it should also create some excitement that, man, if I, if I live for him and I have the opportunity, man, to stand before God and, uh, and to, man, be proven faithful, you know, man, there's a reality that Jesus said that some people will stand before him and they will hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. You know, man, it's possible to live a life that really is faithful to Christ, to stand before, stand before him in that day and to be grateful that you live for him. You know, personally for me, I want to be one of those people, you know, that's not a shame, but stands before God and says, hey, I gave it everything I had. Man, live for eternity and do it for yourself. Do it not only because you do it for yourself, but you should do it for others. Do it for others. Do it for yourself and do it for others. You know, every single person on this planet also is going to stand before God and they're going to give an account for their life. You know, and their, and their destination will be one of two places. And so that's probably one of the biggest things that's the heart of an influencer 
you know, even being we're talking about influencer, is that they understand that, man, every single person on this planet, my friends, my family, everything, they're going to stand before God and they're going to give an account. And they choose, man, not only to live for their own eternity, they take it a step further and they say, man, I want to influence other people's eternity. I want to help other people, man, experience the best eternity possible. Man, I don't want people to stand before God, man, and be condemned. Man, I want them to experience uh, everlasting life. And that's what we've been talking about with influencers. You know, you think back a couple of weeks ago when we talked about being a witness, you know, sharing our faith, sharing the gospel with people, helping people understand what it means to follow Christ. Man, that's in light of eternity because eternity is so real and it's so long and it's final. Man, I tell people about what it means to have a relationship with Christ. And then when they come to faith, I help them grow. I help them understand what it means to live for eternity. And then they do it with other people. So when we're talking about spiritual multiplication, man, that's at the heart of spiritual multiplication. This man, I care about people's eternity. See, a true influencer understands that the deepest influence that you can possibly have on somebody is to influence them for all of eternity. Man, I love how 2 Corinthians describes it, describes it this way. It says, since then we know what, to, what it is to fear the Lord, we try to persuade others. Since we know what it is to fear the Lord, we try to persuade others. And Paul is saying, hey, we, we know about this eternal eternity thing. We know that, man, that we're going to be judged one day. We know that, man, every single person is going to stand before God. And because we do, we try to persuade others. We try to tell them, man, about eternity, about Christ, how they can really have a relationship with God. And then he goes on. He says, hey, not only that, we are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. See, Paul understands, hey, this is, our, this is my responsibility. I'm, I'm an ambassador for Christ I mean, because I understand eternity and I'm living for others' eternity and I want to be an influencer. Man, I'm an ambassador for Christ. I'm his representative, in a sense, man, to the world. And I need to tell people about him. You know, there's this guy named Penn and Teller. Uh, some of y'all might, uh, might have heard of them, okay? But Penn and Teller, they're actually a, a, com- a comedic act. Uh, but Penn over there on the left-hand side, he's actually, uh, he's actually a declared atheist. He doesn't believe in God, okay? And he actually uh, sometimes, like, goes on rants and, like, talks about, like, religion and faith and stuff like that. And, uh, and he's filming himself uh, kind of in this clip. And he describes, man, why he believes that people who understand eternity, who are Christians, should share their faith. He's like, man, I don't understand, man. People will say, hey, you shouldn't share your faith and stuff like that. But if you really believe this, man, you should be uh, sharing your faith. He's an atheist, and he understands, man, what it means to be a witness and why we should care about others' uh, eternity, okay? So we're going to watch this. He's going to use the word proselytize. That word proselytize just means share your faith or be a witness to someone else. So check out this video real quick. And I've always said, you know, that I I don't respect people who don't proselytize. I don't respect that at all. If you believe that there's a heaven and hell and people could be going to hell or not getting eternal life or whatever, and you think that, uh, well, it's not really worth telling them this because it would make it socially awkward. And atheists who think that people shouldn't proselytize, just leave me alone, keep your religion to yourself. Uh, How much do you have to hate somebody to not proselytize? How much do you have to hate somebody to believe that everlasting life is possible and not tell them that? I mean, if I believed beyond a shadow of a doubt that a truck was coming at you and you didn't believe it, that truck was bearing down on you, there's a certain point where I tackle you. And this is more important than that. He says, and this is more important than that. Man, even as, even as an atheist, he gets it. And if we really understand eternity, if we really understand that people are on a blue strip, you know what I mean? And they got this entire eternity in front of them. I mean, if you really care about them, I mean, you can't help but to tell them. You can't help but to tell them about a relationship with Christ to change their eternity. You know, and that's the opportunity we have as influencers, if we'll do it, man, to step into it and to help other people come to know a relationship with Christ. Man, you talk about being an influencer for the rest of your life, y'all, there's no deeper or truer way to be an influencer than to change people's eternity, man, for Jesus Christ. Man, so they cross over from death to life forever. People will be thankful for all of eternity. 
And it's crazy, man, because there's so many people in this room who understand that, who get that, who are living for other people's eternity, who, who see it themselves and not only are living for themselves, but for, or are living for, for other people. And one of my uh, friends, her name is Lexi, is actually a, a girl who understands it. She gets it. She's living this out currently. And she actually has a story, y'all, that I think is really compelling and I think it puts into focus everything we've been talking about tonight. And so give it up for Lexi as she shares her story. Yeah, so coming into college, I would not say I had any kind of eternal perspective. Um, and that's because I didn't think about eternity, like at all. Um, I grew up in church, so I had heard about heaven and hell, but no one had really like sat down with me and explained what that meant. Um, so I kind of just assumed, like Blake was talking about, a lot of people do, um, that everyone was going to heaven. And so, yeah, this didn't, I didn't think about eternity. So then I come to college and I meet this girl who starts to explain to me what eternity means and even what that means for my life. And so we're actually hanging out one day, we get lunch and we're driving back to my dorm, Ford Hall. And she starts explaining this illustration to me. Probably some of you guys have heard it before, um, but it's this idea of a car of where is God at in this car if this is your life and how that relates to eternity. And so is he in the trunk? Is he in the back seat? Is he maybe in the passenger seat? Or is he in the driver's seat of your life? And that means, yeah, he's in control of your life. He, um, you have an eternity with God. And so she's explaining to me what that looks like. And I'm realizing like, okay, maybe God is not in the driver's seat of my life, which would then mean, hey, I'm not going to heaven. And so I'm like really processing that. And I'm like, well, I want to go to heaven, you know? So I um, decide to go all in with God. Um, and I continue to learn more and more about what eternity looks like, but I'm still not really um, thinking through the lens of like, what does that look like for other people? I'm still in this mindset of like, hey, if I um, think something different about eternity than other people, that's okay. And we can kind of just agree to disagree, um, which was honestly pretty selfish on my part, um, just because I'm not thinking about other people's eternities and how that's going to affect them. Um, but last summer, that actually changed and shifted my viewpoint a lot on that. Um, it was in the middle of COVID in June, and I woke up one morning to a phone call from my mom at 7 a.m., and she starts telling me that my cousin named Colby, who was 25, that he is being life flighted from the farm that he works at in Beloit to um, Wichita. And so I'm obviously really freaked out. Um, he had been in a farming accident. And so I get my siblings and we start rushing to the hospital. But honestly, I'm pretty confident still driving to the hospital. I'm like, okay, he's going to be fine. Like he might be there a few days or maybe even a week, but he's going to be fine. And so we get to the hospital and um, I actually see Colby roll by on a stretcher. Um, and it's then that I realize, hey, things might not be fine. And so um, kind of some backstory on Colby and I's relationship, but um, we both had divorced parents from really young age. And so we grew really close and kind of had more of a sibling relationship than cousins. So seeing him like this was really, really hard for me. And so um, it was actually two days later after we've raced to the hospital and after a series of tests and surgeries, they actually pronounce Colby brain dead. And then five days after that, I attend the funeral of my 25 year old cousin that I will never see alive again. And so obviously that's a lot to process. And I'm questioning God. I'm like, hey, what, what, why did this happen? Like, what's the purpose in this? Obviously really painful. Um, but a friend shares with me this verse, Genesis 50, 20, which just explains how God uses really hard things and turns them into good. And so the use of that verse with combined with experiencing Colby's death, this just really opened my eyes to the importance of talking about other people's eternities um, and how yeah that affects other people too. And so God just grows this sense of urgency in my heart that I want to share this with other people. And so I experienced one example of that is feeling that urgency is with my friend Grace. And so Grace and I grew up together, but we didn't really know each other that well. Um, but I knew she was coming to K-State this year, and I was excited to reconnect. And so she um, agrees to have coffee with me at the beginning of this past semester. And I'm like, okay, 
I know that I want to bring up God in faith, but I'm not really sure how that's going to go. Um, but I'm just praying that God would allow us an opportunity to talk about her eternity. And so we are hanging out, drinking coffee, doing the thing. And normally, or sorry, not normally, uh, but we actually get to walk through um, these verses, this passage in the Bible together that talks about um, how when we give our lives to God, not only do our lives on earth change, but also our eternities. And so Grace is asking a lot of really good questions. And I'm like kind of unsure of how this is going. I'm like, God, I'm trying to answer these questions, but like just speak through me because I don't know if I know all the answers. And so I honestly leave that hangout feeling kind of unsure about how the whole thing went. But I'm also really confident because I know that God wants me to talk about eternity with other people, even if it doesn't always go perfect. And so, yeah, I'm praying after we hang out and praying to God, like, hey, God, would you have used that conversation to make Grace aware of her eternity and just change her heart about that? Um, and even thanking God for allowing me the opportunity to be a part of that conversation. And so fast forward a couple weeks, we're hanging out again. We're going on a walk around City Park and Grace is just explaining to me how God has changed her life and how he has filled this void in her life that was once there and how she's let God into all these different areas of her life. And I'm kind of confused because I'm like, we just hung out two weeks ago and you're kind of telling me how you weren't sure if you wanted to do this or not. So I just asked Grace, I'm like, Grace, did you decide to give your life to Christ? And she's like, oh yes, I did after we hung out. And I was like, really? That is incredible. And I'm just like, wow, thank you for telling me. But um, yeah, so all that to say, I'm just really grateful that God allows me to be a part of impacting other people's eternities. That's awesome. And getting to experience the joy of seeing somebody else's eternity change. There, there's nothing like it. And if you, have, if you haven't seen somebody's face light up, and when they realize that, that their eternity has changed, like grace, and, man, you're missing out. And that's the greatest and purpose you can be, give your life to. And, man, it's the greatest way to be an influencer. And so we've been talking about uh, this idea of dips. Okay, so we said living for eternity. This is what it looks like. Man, it affects your decisions, investments, priorities, schedule. Man, we're we saying we need to live for eternity. Man, all those things need to be pointed at eternity. Man, you're ready to do it. You want to do it? Man, you want to take some active steps forward? Man, I would say, man, there's some practical steps that you can take, man, that point your life, man, towards eternity. Man, to stop living for, man, just the here and now, but man, to live for eternity, for yourself and for others. And so, uh, so we're going to say, I'm going to share some application points and they're going to kind of correlate uh, with each of the four that we talked about, okay? So for decisions, uh, I would say this, the first decision that you need to make is you need to trust Christ. That's probably the primary decision that you need to make. Man, if you want your life to be pointed at eternity, man, place your trust in Christ. Y'all, I promise you, your, your, your eternity, your heaven or your hell is not worth risking. It's not, it's not worth running the gamble on. You know, I, I've met so many people who are like, man, I'll do it when I'm 60, when I'm 70. I'm like, man, you know, honestly, nowadays, man, you, you don't know if you're going to make it that long, just being honest. You know, I got, I, got a, I got a bunch of friends that, man, have passed away at a young age. Man, you, you never know when that day is going to be for you. And, man, your eternity is not worth it. I mean, if you haven't yet, I would say, I plead with you, man. Place your trust in Christ. I, I want to see you in heaven. I want to party it up with you. I want to dance um, and eat some good food. You know what I mean? So place your trust in Christ. For the I, for investments, uh, for investing correctly, I would say probably the best investment that you can make uh, is, in, is in impacting others. Impacting others. And Lexi talked about it, man, but man, the joy of getting to impact grace, uh, I, can't even, I can't even express that. Uh, and it's cool because, man, actually the Bible says that only three things last forever, God, his words, and the souls of people. Okay, so man, one of the best things that I can invest in, man, is other people. And man, God's word and God himself. And so, man, find a way to impact, start impacting people around you, man. If it looks like, man, having, man, starting to have conversations with people about their faith, man, learn what that looks like. Maybe it's somebody that you came with. You can ask them how they do it. Uh, but learn what that looks like and, man, start impacting others. For priorities, I would say this, man, probably the number one priority that you need to have is putting off and putting on. Putting off and putting on. What do I mean by that? Well, in, in Ephesians 4, okay, sorry, it's the wrong verse up there. 
But in Ephesians 4, 22 through 24, it describes it this way. It says, you were, you were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. You know, and the reality is, man, you want to prioritize, man, your holiness and you separating from sin in your life. Man, put off, man, those old habits and things that you used to do in the past. Man, put on the new life that Christ has called you to. And we talked about standing before God and literally everything that you do being judged. And one of the best things you can do to live for eternity is, man, prioritize, man, that day when you stand before him, man, to put off, man, the old self and to put on the new self. The last one is this. For a schedule, that you want to invest wisely. For a schedule, you want to invest wisely. So, I mean, spend your time uh, in ways that are going to matter. I mean, spend time in God's Word. Spend time around God's people. I May mean, take opportunities to grow. I think Heath, in a minute, is going to talk about Cleo. Man, this is a great way to live for eternity, man, to put, put that in your schedule and say, hey, man, I want, to, I want to take an opportunity to grow in my faith as something like Kaleo. Or maybe it's, man, coming to Stumo Nights like this or a Bible study that you have, man, in uh, your place on campus. Or maybe it's somebody that, that, you, that you came with and, man, you've been reading the Word together. I would say, man, keep that, keep that air tight in your schedule. Say, hey, I want to I wanna live for eternity. I want to re- keep reading the Word uh, with this person. Whatever it is, man, point your life towards the eternity and live for it. Well, hey, I'm, I'm so pumped, man, to see all of you people, man, sitting in this room, man, learning what it looks like to walk with God and, man, be people, man, who really are influencers. You know, I really believe, man, if we can be people, man, who live for eternity, man, we can be people who influence people in the truest and deepest way. Let me pray for us. Father God, thank you for tonight and thank you for the reality of your word and for the fact that you gave us opportunity to live with you forever. God, that uh, we don't have to, uh, choose, we don't have to experience hell. God, we can choose you, we can follow you, God, and we can trust you and have a relationship with you. God, and we love you and we thank you and it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hey, here's some discussion questions for you. Go ahead and discuss these and then uh, he's gonna bring us up here in a second.